Greetings to our friends around the world and welcome to the webcast. Tonight's live broadcast of Air and Space's 24 flight of a Soyuz coming to you live from our studio in, in uh, Paris and we're very happy to have you uh, with us. We're back uh, tonight for another try and we have with us two experts from Air and Space who are going to be with us and sharing their expert knowledge all through the broadcast. But first, we want to go back over to Kuru, where Stefan Israel, Arian Space's chief executive, is uh, standing by. Stefan, if you can hear us. Stefan, welcome to you. How is the situation in Kuru tonight? Yes, Josh. Very well. So we are now in the Jupiter uh, Control Center. We are with uh, our customers and our partners. We are now at uh, four minutes before liftoff. We are focused on the launch. Everything is green. The weather is green. All the parameters we have from the satellite and the rocket are green. So let's wait now the final minutes. And if everything remains green, remains green up to the end, we will lift off and it will be a mission of 58 minutes. Okay, Stefan, very good. Many thanks. Stefan is going to take his place at work in uh, the fishbowl with his team, and we'll be back with him for the end uh, of the broadcast. I'm going to take my place with my two experts here. On my right, Romy Chevrier, mission analyst from Marian Space. On my left, Raphael Chevrier, business development and innovation. Welcome to you both. Hello. Hello. Romy, to you first. Can you give us a description, an overall look at the mission we're about to see? Yes, briefly speaking, the mission will include a total of uh, three fregat burns after the Soyuz uh, ascent phase. The Soyuz uh, tri-stages will place the fregat into a suborbital orbit in uh, around nine minutes. The first fregat burn will shape the trajectory into an elliptical transfer orbit and uh, the end of the burn will happen uh, around uh, 17 minutes uh, after the liftoff. Then we will have a ballistic phase with a loss of telemetry. Mm -hmm. a passive uh, phase. Uh, but the loss of uh, telemetry is not a big deal. It, it, it's uh, it's, no, no, it's, it's program. It's not, not a problem. Yes, it's foreseen. It's completely normal. Yeah. Indeed. Uh, this passive phase, this passive phase uh, will uh, help us to reach uh, the apogee, and uh, there is uh, no telemetry uh, needed uh, during this passive phase. At the apogee, the second fregat boost uh, will circulate the orbit to reach the Falcon Eye orbit. Mm -hmm. A few minutes after the cutoff, the command separation is sent to release the clamp bond, and uh, the separation will take place. Of course, then we have another ballistic phase. During it, the downloading of the onboard mass memory will occur. After that, a third short burn will happen to deorbit the frigate. It will re-enter the atmosphere like a comet under the Indian Ocean. After that, and uh, it will be the end of the mission for a two hours duration at all. Okay, well watch out for all those uh, milestones. Raphael, to you now, development, business development and innovation, what do you do? What does that mean? Well, to make it short, it means that I'm working on innovative, um, sort of exotic uh, mission concepts to be addressed with our next generation of launch vehicles, Ariane 6 and Vigus C. For example, going to the moon, mm -hmm. which would be your first uh, one for Europe. So that's quite uh, exciting uh, perspectives. You're going to hear the DDO call out to one minute mark. DDO has just said he's going to call out the one-minute mark. DDO is the range operations manager for the mission. Stop. One minute. Mm. He has just called the one-minute mark, so we're into the final 60 seconds. 
and uh, we'll let you uh, watch the mission. We're going to cut away, and we'll be back with you after liftoff. And once Soyuz has begun her mission, enjoy the liftoff, everyone. We'll see you afterward. Largage du mât, Casadem. À tous de DDO, attention pour le début de la séquence d'allumage du lanceur. Top, à 0 moins 20 secondes. La, largage du mât VKM. Allumage triétage. Tous de DDO, attention pour le, dé, le, la, le début de la séquence. De décompte final. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Décollage. into the clouds and out of the clouds and you can still see the fire and you saw those fine shots uh, always impressive no matter how many times you see Soyuz powering into the sky above uh, French Guiana at liftoff 307 tons the DDO is saying all is perfect on board all is nominal we're going to follow her mass profile because she's going to shed a lot of weight very quickly Rami can you describe briefly the launcher for us yes uh, the launcher is divided in two parts. The lower composite is the uh, Tri-Stages Soyuz, manufactured by Akatsi. The upper composite is the Fregat Stage, manufactured by NPOL with the payload. Uh, about that, there is often a confusion because people use the same word, Soyuz, to talk about the complete launcher or the lower composite. But in fact, it's actually two parts. Yes, exactly. From the Soyuz point of view, the upper composite is assimilated to a payload as another. And the goal of Soyuz is to inject the upper part onto a suborbital orbit. After that, the, the fregat uh, will manage the rest of the missions, and that's all. We have had successful separation of the boosters, and you saw it on the animation. Yes. On the bottom of your screen, our altitude, you can see 53 kilometers up, and our speed, that's vitesse in French, just approaching two kilometers per second. The figure is coming in from the downrange tracking stations into Rami's office, and we'll have more on that in a moment. Raphael, how many times have you seen a liftoff? Uh, in real? In real once. life, yeah. It was in Only one. five uh, from Kourou. And uh, this you're, is something that outside. you really uh, remember. Yeah. You were outside. I was outside. I was at five kilometers uh, from the launcher. I think this is the closest you can get from the launcher. Four or five kilometers, yeah. 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 Unless and you're I remember, on board. Sorry? Unless you're on board. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But um, yeah, I really, I really remember the, uh, the bright light nominal. coming from the sky and the, 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 the sound coming from the ground. This is really, really, really impressive. But most of the time, we see it uh, on TV. Yeah. <laughs> you saw some people from the European Space Agency, uh, Europe Space Effort, a three-way affair, of course, with Ariane Space, the French Space Agency, CNES, and the uh, European Space Agency. Generally speaking, roughly, Ariane Space responsible for marketing and operating the launch vehicle. ESA and its member states funding the new programs, and the CNES, the French Agency, coordinating all the space base operations. Next up, fairing jettison. Before that, we are flying north to what kind of an orbit? We're going around the sun. We're not going around the sun, but we are going around the Earth in low Earth orbit, but in a sun-synchronous orbit. <clears throat> so it means that uh, when we launch satellites there, on this orbit, the satellite will come, uh, will fly by an area, the, the one he wants to observe, at a certain time during the day. And this time is not going to change uh, through the uh, mission of the satellite. So it means that uh, 
it, uh, for example, it flies by uh, at uh, three o'clock in the afternoon, then it's going always going to fly by uh, an area at this time, and this time is not going to change. Confirmation of the fairing jettison. We have had fairing jettison, right? Thank you, because you have the confirmation of the DDO in your ear. The uh, separation of fairing at coming at about 150 kilometers altitude. Our speed now, as you can see, over three kilometers per second. Why is the fairing jettison so important? I know it's a key milestone. Yes, a good question because as soon as the launcher leaves the atmosphere, the satellite doesn't need any more to be protected. Yeah. As each kilogram is important, the unuseful fairing mass is ejected. But uh, without the fairing jettisoning, the satellite would stay prisoner inside it. So. This is why it's so important for us to have this confirmation. We've had second stage separation. You followed it on the animation and ignition of the third stage. You see on the screen the names of our downrange tracking stations. The Galio station is in French Guiana. The Bermuda station, followed by Saint Hubert, which is outside of Montreal. We'll have a word about them coming up. Confirmation of the ignition of the block I. So we are right on time. The, the name Soy is, of course, familiar to you, going back to the early days of the space space, and uh, Rafael will talk about that La in uh, just a minute. It's the workhorse of the Soviet, and now, of course, the Russian and the European space program. And Soyuz in Kourou is thanks to a long association between the Russians and the Europeans, yeah? Yeah, I think uh, it goes back to 1966, when the General de Gaulle that you probably heard of. Heard the name. Yeah. Um, actually, he had the chance, and he was the first political leader in the Western world to attend the launch uh, from Baikonur. And he actually was so impressed that he pushed for a first-of-a-kind cooperation between French and the uh, USSR. And this cooperation became, with time, a unique cooperation between Europe and Russia. Mm -hmm. And in the years 2000, um, there was like a very emblematic mission that was, were launched from uh, Baikonur or by Soyuz. You're talking about the Mars? For and example, the, uh, towards Mars yeah, or towards right. Venus. We'll get back to that later, yeah. yeah. Exactly. But go ahead, but, but go ahead. Yeah, and then um, this pushed some discussions about transferring the Soyuz from Baikonur to Kourou, uh, which was uh, a very uh, challenging and ambitious and, idea. And rather, rather visionary for the times. Yeah, exactly, so. because like uh, transferring a foreign uh, launcher uh, in your launch pad, this is, uh, I think this is like really but unique in the space uh, sector. Uh, and this happened uh, with time, and the first uh, launch of Soyuz from uh, Kourou happened in uh, 2011, so almost 10 years ago. 10 years. Next, uh, next year, we'll be celebrating 10 years of Soyuz in uh, French exactly. Guiana. Romy, uh, where you usually work is an office called the CVI. Yep. And what's the function of the CVI? It treats all the telemetry. We saw the stations earlier. What's its role? Oh, indeed. Uh, the CVI is a real-time monitoring. And this, uh, this real-time monitoring of the launcher is um, probably the most important ground operation during the flight. It allows to check that the fly is nominal and to confirm to our customer that the satellite is separated uh, as expected. The data collected by the ground tracking station are immediately sent to the Soyuz Control Center in French Guiana and to the Fregat Fly Monitoring Center. That's in Moscow. Yes. About that, presently, two colleagues are in Kourou for the real-time monitoring, Adeline Roquet and Thomas Secretin. And two other colleagues are in Avery, and not in Moscow due to the pandemic, to collect the orbital diagnosis. Claude Legrand and Antoine Courtois. So hello to my colleague. We have had acquisition of our next downrange tracking station. It's uh, the Bermuda Islands. It's, we're flying north along the east coast of the U.S. The Bermuda station was a NASA station, I think, renovated in 2018. The European I Space Agency first the began the studying the possibility of launching Soyuz from French Guiana back in 1998. And they started the program in 2004. Coming up on separation and extinction of the third stage, there's the nozzle shutting down, and a separation coming up, and there you are, right on time. Do we get confirmation, confirmation of the extinction of the supply act. Our altitude, 375 kilometers, our speed climbing to approaching seven kilometers. Romy, why do we 
use a Soyuz for this mission? Separation of the block high. Separation of the block, okay, so we're doing fine. Why, why do we use a Soyuz on this particular mission? Why to use a, okay, uh, for this kind of mission and the need of several boosters and this range of payload mass around 1.3 tons, Soyuz is perfect. Perfect, what do you mean perfect? Perfect because, uh, in particular, due to the fregat capability, uh, the fregat stage is very uh, durable, light, and accurate. Mm -hmm. It's an heritage of the propulsive system of the Phobos uh, space probe uh, towards Mars. And uh, the fregat can withstand long coasting phase. You saw in the animation ignition. Yes, of the first confirmation of the ignition of the first fregat. Burn. So we've had that right on time. There will be two burns that we will see. There will be another one where, that we won't see, but uh, Remy and Rafael will tell us more about that. But for now, t tell us a bit about the frigate, which was designed to be a separate individual orbiter. Yes, yes. Confirmation frigate can perform some complex frigate. missions because, as I yeah. said, the frigate can withstand long coasting phase first and uh, ray ignitions up to uh, seven. And uh, uh, in a way, uh, this, uh, this uh, stage uh, will be uh, perfect for this kind of particular mission, which is the SSO orbit. SSO orbit. Now, we also, one of the uh, ignitions of the Soyuz is going to be to deorbit yeah. the vehicle. Is that right? What's, yeah. what, what's we we that save about? one boost of Fregat in order to uh, re enter it into uh, the atmosphere. Yeah. And this is very important because this way, we don't leave uh, an additional debris uh, in orbit. Ah, space debris. Exactly. Yeah. Big and question. We are Big actually issue. required to do this uh, by the French space law, which is like one of the, the best uh, in the space sector uh, today. Yeah. And um, you know that um, this um, debris is uh, an issue, especially in low Earth orbit, because there are like lots of satellites uh, up there. Uh, there are many, many uh, more uh, constellations. So it's important for us when we do a launch uh, to not leave debris uh, behind yeah. and to participate in a sustainable use of space in a way. Our Soyuz that we're using is the most recent version of the famous uh, Russian launcher that began the space race over 60 uh, years ago. You remember it launched, Sput well maybe you don't remember if you're uh, younger than I am, when it launched Sputnik, the first human into space, Yuri Gagarin, the first woman in space, the first spacewalk, the first dog in space. Soyuz originally a missile you remember, the R-7, the world's first intercontinental ballistic missile created by Sergei Korolev. The DDO says all is, all is uh, perfect on board. We've had uh, first and second core stage uh, ignition, and the second stage and the third stage performed flawlessly, and we're into the first of the uh, frigate burns. All in all, and all, all this time, in over 60 years, uh, all the Soviet and Russian manned missions have been on the launch on derivative of this original uh, missile, the R-7, which is today the Soyuz. Up next, a word from Ariane Space's program director, Terry Pham. We spoke to him earlier in the week, and we began by asking him to tell us all about the flight. Good evening, Joshua. Well, tonight, uh, the flight VS-24 will have on board the Falcon 9 satellite for the benefit of the United Arab Emirates Armed Forces. We will use a Soyuz ST launcher with a Frigate M upper stage, and uh, this will be the eighth uh, launch of INS Pass of the year. Um, I would like to thank Alizé France and Space, which is our customer, uh, who has signed the contract with INS Pass uh, in 2015. You've talked about the flight. What exactly is the mission of the Soyuz launcher tonight? Well, I will say that uh, this is a standard uh, optimization of the trajectory for uh, an SSO flight uh, with uh, an ascent flight of the three stage, which has lasted uh, around nine minutes, and then uh, two frigate uh, boosts in order to inject the satellite in the required orbit. We will have for this mission uh, a last boost uh, to re-enter the upper stage in the atmosphere, and the Falcon 9 satellite will uh, be separated from the launcher at approximately uh, a bit less than 59 minutes of flight. And how was the campaign? Any highlights? What do you think you're going to remember? Well, I will say that it has been a, a long campaign uh, with, a, with a long standby uh, phase. Um, we, have, we have faced some technical uh, concerns on the launcher, but uh, everything has been overcome with, by all the teams 
in, in due manner. And uh, I would like uh, just to, to highlight the fact that the professionalism uh, spirit of uh, INS Pass and Russian partner teams in order to overcome these difficulties was uh, excellent. And uh, I would like to thank uh, all these people who have worked very hard uh, on this program. The other point that I would like to, to say is that I would like to thank uh, Airbus Defence and Space, our customer, and Thales Alenia Space, uh, plus the United Arab Emirates uh, teams, because uh, they have, uh, all along the program, uh, uh, always adopted constructive approaches uh, in all uh, these uh, difficult times that we had with the COVID, uh, COVID pandemic situation. And uh, we are now here uh, for this launch of the VS-24 flight, and I would like to, uh, to wish a very long life to the Falcon 9 satellite. Mm. Terry Fah, many thanks. During the interview with Terry, we were picked up by our next uh, downrange tracking station outside Montreal, Saint-Hubert in Quebec. They have a mobile servicing system and an operations complex there, everything to monitor satellites, including uh, crew training. If you just joined us, perfect liftoff, all the stages performed uh, perfectly, flawlessly, only the frigate, uh, we're in the middle of the first burn now. A single engine, frigate is an autonomous, flexible uh, upper stage, relatively recent addition to the uh, intercontinental ballistic missile that we talked about earlier, first qualified in 2000. Josh, excuse me, I received the confirmation concerning the acquisition of Saint-Hubert Ground Slaking Station. Terrific, so we're right on time and we're right on target. As long as I have you, the different frigate burns, we're in the middle of the first one. We, you want to tell us about the mission injection profile, I think it's called. Yeah, uh, indeed. The, the first burn will, um, will inject the frigate in an elliptical transfer orbit. And we need to wait uh, on this uh, elliptical uh, transfer orbit because we, inject, we are injected at the perigee and we need to wait the perigee, sorry, the perigee is the highest perigee, point. No, it's the no that's the lowest point. point. Lowest yeah. point. And then the launcher keeps increasing its altitude yeah. until it reaches the apogee. And at the apogee, the second burn will happen in order to circularize the, the, the orbit because the SSO is a nearly polar circular orbit. Nearly polar circular orbit. Anything to add about the orbit? The SSO orbit, it's what, it's 800 kilometers up? Yeah, and climate. it's um, inclined, uh, like uh, Remy said, uh, at uh, 98 degrees with, with respect to the equatorial plane. Yeah. And uh, it is uh, quite uh, specific for Earth observation satellites mm -hmm. that want to take pictures uh, in visible light uh, because the illumination con uh, conditions will be the same uh, when it flies by a certain point uh, on the Earth. Oh, you can see the nozzle shutting down. This is the scheduled first uh, frigate burn cutoff. Extension confir confirmation. You've got the confirmation. Okay, everything is happening. Uh, is letter perfect. Turning to our passenger, Falcon and I will be separated at plus 58 minutes, 45 seconds, so we have a while to go. Passenger riding patiently for the moment. Falcon and I is the 98th, we're approaching 100, 98th Earth observation satellite launched by Arian Space. And Raphael Earth Observation representing, I have here, 13% of all satellites orbited by the group. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a quite a strong market. It's a uh, lot of activity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's, it's, a, it's a strong market. It's very dynamic. And it serves a lot of applications, for example, um, monitoring the climate, um, studying the biodiversity, for example, following the, uh, the migration of species. Um, they also address lots of new digitalized markets, yeah. uh, such as agriculture, building, construction, urbanism. Search and rescue after hurricanes, for instance, after Search natural disasters. Exactly. Yeah, all that. Uh, yeah, a lot, and a lot of other small businesses uh, that require high resolution uh, images from satellites. And it's a big market. Another 19 Earth observation uh, satellites awaiting launch in the area and space backlog. Even we're archaeology, we're, too. We're coming up on, uh, on our launch replay. There we are. Where you can live once again uh, those exciting pictures, the smoke and the fire and the sound and the fury that you saw as the Soyuz lifted off just about 19 minutes ago.
Any emotions in those pictures again? I mean, this is always very uh, impressive. I said that I've lived uh, lunch once, but most of the time we see it uh, from Paris uh, yeah. on TV. And but we leave it; it's still very emotional because we leave it in a, as a team with our colleagues. And uh, yeah. actually, each time it's like we physically feel that we are part of a team, part of the same uh, spaceship, um, and uh, it's very. Uh, very strong um, emotions because we really feel like part of a family. You agree, Romain? I completely share what Raphael said. Uh, I, indeed, I, I never get used to these emotions with tension mixed uh, to excitement. And in, in campaign, I have the feeling that uh, everybody pushes the launcher and at the lift of time, I would like to be an additional engine in a way. <laughs> Uh, all this proceeding normally on board. Back on the ground, we have three launch pads for Soyuz, right? Why do we need three? We need it to be available and flexible when we launch satellites. Uh, and uh, yeah, Soyuz has three launch pads. The first one is obviously uh, at CSG in Kourou in French Guiana. Yeah. And we have performed 24 flights uh, there so far, including tonight's flight. Yeah. Uh, there is this historical Baikonur uh, launch pad also. And we have performed uh, in the space and Starsem uh, 28 launches also so far. And there is this new brand uh, one in Vostochny. It was inaugurated in 2016. That's the newest one. Exactly. So and actually, some of our colleagues are already there to prepare the next uh, launch of uh, oh, yeah? Soyuz. So it's quite exciting. They are working hard right now uh, in order to prepare this, uh, this launch. So it's going to be another great show. Our Soyuz pad is the seventh, and the Vostochny pad, as you mentioned, is newer. That's the eighth pad. Right? Is, uh, so Soyuz was the most recent pad. The, uh, uh, CSG pad was the most recent until what, last year, two years ago, when, mm -hmm. when Vostochny. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There are two uh, pads at Baikonur, I think, and there's some at Plitset, Plisetsk also, I do believe. Yeah. We're going to... Uh, go to another film in just a moment. Okay, passenger. It's a proud moment for uh, all of us at the Space uh, Reconnaissance uh, Center and the space sector in the United Arab Emirates. Uh, as we are uh, getting ready to launch uh, Falcon I uh, satellite after a journey of uh, five years developing uh, a capable system for the United Arab Emirates. Falcon I is an autonomous and powerful Earth observation system that consists of two state-of-the-art Earth observation satellites fully owned and operated by the UAE. The ground segment is capable of tasking, processing and delivering very high resolution optical imagery in large volumes. A mobile ground segment is designed to be deployed globally in theaters of operations. Capacity wise, Falcon Eye satellites uh, constellation are capable of uh, providing hundreds of images with the uh, high resolution spec on a daily basis. Falcon Eye system will collect image in panchromatic and multispectral. From capability perspective, the attitude and orbit control system provides the satellites with high agility. The system is designed to assure global fast turnaround between task and request acquisition to the delivery of data autonomously. It is really uh, considered to be a capability owned by few countries only worldwide. Many experienced engineers and technicians with different background were selected from the armed forces units. I am part of Falcon Eye Engineering System uh, since the beginning of the program. 
I'm honored that my country provided me the chance to be part of this high-end technology program. The Falcon Eye project work was mainly managed by an Emirati resident team in France. Daily meetings with the contractors were held to have an overview on the assembly, integration and testing phases of the program. They participate in Falcon Eye program to enhance their capabilities in the field of space. And I'm very happy to have the chance to go back home with such massive experience that we have gained throughout the journey of the program. I'm very excited to see this uh, satellite finally in orbit and uh, very excited also to see how it will uh, bring value for uh, our country. The Falcon Eye uh, system added uh, lots of capabilities uh, to uh, support uh, the country mission by uh, maintaining uh, the security of the country and also the stability in the region. The Falcon Eye system will provide high output of high quality images to support critical missions, emergency relief, regional security and peacekeeping operations. It will help to manage essential life resources such as water and monitor environmental changes and alterations to geographical features. The Falcon Eye will soar above the sky and observe the Earth with extraordinary vision, empowering the UAE's vision of peace and prosperity for the world. We are in between the two uh, frigate burns into what's called the ballistics phase. Is that right? Yes. We are. This is the time of the ballistic phase, indeed. Uh, so what is that all about, ballistics phase? Why do they yes, call it ballistic? What we call ballistic phase is this is a costing phase, indeed. Uh, that means that there is uh, no main engine uh, activation, okay. only a control of attitude of the launcher provided by the small uh, nozzles of the attitude control uh, system. Okay, so no forward push, no forward thrust, yeah. just corrections, yaw or pitch? Yes, uh, just, yes, we just control uh, the motion of the launcher Okay. without, uh, without propulsion. And uh, no telemetry is needed during this uh, passive phase. And this is the case uh, for these missions. We have a loss of telemetry. A loss of telemetry, but yes, it's, it's, uh, it's quite normal. Yes, it's, yeah. it's completely uh, nominal, yeah. and this loss of telemetry uh, will have a duration of uh, 32 uh, minutes mm -hmm. uh, until the acquisitions of the next ground tracking stations, New Norcia, in, uh, in Australia. Mm -hmm. And uh, why we can do uh, like that? Because uh, only the main event have to be uh, under the visibility of a uh, ground tracking stations and by mean events I mean that uh, I mean ignitions extension of the burns and of course the separation separation yes but uh, in order to restitute the flies we are interested in having the parameter during uh, the wall flight mm -hmm. uh, this is why if uh, no ground tracking station e is available mm -hmm. uh, we are using the onboard mass memories and what happens there? You record it somewhere else, and it goes back to the ground stations as if it had been recorded by the launch vehicle. Is that right, more or less? Y yes, more or less. It's quite, it's quite more a complicated. A little more complicated than yes. that? Yes. Right. We can, uh, indeed, we can both transmit the real-time parameter yeah. and record them. That we can do this both uh, operation on board the frigate. But we cannot both transmit the real-time parameter, and download the mass memory. Therefore, we have to wait, being in a passive phase, under ground tracking station visibility, to download the mass memory. And it will be the case because, actually, uh, at the present time, uh, we record the flight from the beginning of the first frigate burn until the separation. And after the separation, we will be again in visibility of Galio, and at this moment, it will be a ballistic phase, we have the opportunity to downloading the mouse memory. It is, it is more complex than I, mm. than I made it out to be. Okay. The decision of the European Space Agency 
to introduce Soyuz to the Guiana Space Center was a very big step, coming after, as Raphael said, a long uh, history of association between uh, the Russians and uh, the Europeans. And now it has led to constellations being a big part of their market. Isn't that right? Yeah, yeah. Constellation. Uh, we have at Iron Space gained um, some valuable um, experience on this, uh, this big market. Uh, it goes actually uh, back to uh, 1999 yeah. when we first uh, deployed with Soyuz uh, the Global Star Constellation. We had like 12, 12 launches uh, with Soyuz uh, back then. Uh, it was like a telecommunication uh, constellations in low Earth uh, orbit for this uh, American company, uh, Global Star. And um, so we also used Soyuz uh, to deploy the uh, O3B uh, constellations. Yeah. So this one is going uh, in uh, medium Earth orbit at 8,000 kilometers from Earth. Yeah. It's another orbit. Yeah, exactly. And we were launching with Soyuz four satellites uh, at a time there. Uh, so now 20 uh, uh, satellites uh, of uh, the O3B constellations are uh, up there. And we also use the, our lightweight launch vehicle Vega to deploy this time Earth observation uh, satellites uh, for a constellation, if Planet. He, if you used Vega, they had to be lighter satellites. Than, uh, they are lighter instance. satellites, ah. yeah, for us. Observation uh, constellation, they are uh, usually uh, lighter. lighter. Yeah. And uh, of course, we deployed this um, big uh, Galileo uh, constellation. This is a navigation uh, constellation similar to the GPS, but European one. And it uh, will uh, deliver, uh, it gives you your localization with the unprecedented uh, uh, precision and detail. And we use for this uh, Ariane 5 and Soyuz. So we were launching four satellites at a time on Iron 5 and uh, two satellites at a time on, uh, on Soyuz. And we launched, we deployed 26 in total of such uh, satellites. And they are in um, uh, medium Earth orbits also at 22,000 kilometers from Earth. And of course, we uh, are in a way to deploying the OneWeb constellation. This is a big one. It's also that's, going that's in low Earth orbit. It's another orbit again, but that's what hundreds of satellites, I think. It is 650 satellites in total, so and we are going to deploy it by 2022 yeah. uh, with Soyuz. So we already have performed uh, three flights uh, for uh, OneWeb, and each flight is carrying 36 satellites uh, at a time, which is uh, quite a lot. So, yes, uh, to answer your questions, uh, deploying constellations will keep us quite busy in the next years. Okay, I have um, another question about constellations uh, for you coming up, but first I want to turn to you, Romy. You've got some information for us on your screen, as I understand. Yes, correct. Uh, yes, I receive uh, in, uh, in live uh, uh, information concerning uh, coming from uh, the CVI cell. Yeah, you're in and your office. This, this is why I often look at my computers, yeah. of course, and uh, in a way I can follow uh, in live all the main events during this uh, this launch and uh, everything is perfect and nominal that's great a okay on that's board great. good i'm going to get back to you about constellation just for a last question what are the main challenges that launch providers see in deploying these constellations hundreds mm. of satellites well first you, you need to be available uh, to be able to launch uh, as many times uh, as you can because constellation operators are usually required to deploy uh, a part of that constellation at a certain time. Many at a time. Many they have like a yeah. deadline, and so we need to do the job yeah. uh, as launch service providers. And so we have three launch pads with Soyuz, which is quite convenient for this. Uh, with Ariane 6, we will reduce the launch campaign from 30 days to 10 days. So Ar Ariane 6, just to remind people, that's the upgraded uh, Ariane 5, which is going to be entering service shortly. Exactly, it's the next generation of uh, heavy launch uh, vehicle of Iron Space. Yeah. And also, uh, last but not least, uh, we need to uh, develop specific uh, dispensers because you need to uh, carry as much satellites as you can in a single launch to be efficient. And doing so, and each satellite is going to be separated in a very specific location in space yeah. in a single flight. So you need to have like specific interface with each satellite, which is quite uh, ambitious. And so we do this. We have done this uh, in the past. 
it's a valuable experience there. And but of course, not without challenges. Not without challenges. And, and, and of course, you also need, and this is important, reignition capability. And this is the case with Soyuz, and this is going to be the case with Ariane 6. Uh, and this is a key asset in order to deploy constellations because you can reboost and uh, address several orbits in a single flight. Okay, 19, uh, sorry. Uh, excuse me, I just went to receive a very good uh, news because we analyzed the orbit mm -hmm. just after the, the cutoff of the first frigate burn and the parameter is perfect. Okay, you mentioned cutoff. cutoff, I'm gonna have to cut you off. We have another look at Falcon Eye coming up, this time with the Falcon Eye Satellite Mission Director. It's a proud moment uh, for us in the United Arab Emirates, uh, the space sector, uh, the Space Reconnaissance Center. Uh, Falcon Eye program is a result of the continuous cooperation between the United Arab Emirates and Republic of France in the field of space. Uh, Falcon Eye is a dual use system considered to be one of the best uh, worldwide in terms of uh, capabilities owned by few countries globally. Falcon Eye is uh, a valuable asset uh, to support the United Arab Emirates uh, mission to maintain uh, the national security, uh, the stability in the region, uh, and also to augment uh, the civilian uh, sectors. All right, going back to the uh, launch pads that you talked about, our, our three launch pads, what are the differences between the, the pads and the similarities? Are there any? Well, the main difference is that Kourou is located at five degrees uh, north of the, the equator. So you, you're close to the equator, so you benefit from the uh, slingshot effect of the rotation of the Earth. So it gives you an extra boost uh, in order to launching uh, satellites uh, into space. Right. And the second big difference is that in Kourou, you have this mobile gantry uh, that uh, allows you to, uh, well, first protect the launcher from the weather, and also to do uh, last minute, uh, during the last days of the campaign, uh, some uh, activities, for example, mating the upper composite uh, mm -hmm. on top of the launch pad uh, uh, on the launcher uh, three days before launch. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking of one last uh, also difference, yeah. uh, is that uh, in French Guiana, there is a sort of like a wildlife. And uh, one of my colleagues told me that uh, he saw a jaguar uh, turning around the launch pad. I guess really? that, that was quite scary uh, at really? first. This is uh, something very specific of French Guiana. For, for French Guiana, yeah, the Amazon forest, yeah? Yeah, yeah, I smile that because uh, I have a memory to share with you that during the, the lift off, in particular during a, a night launch, the noisy forests, because the forest is very, very noisy, uh, get uh, suddenly quiet very quiet, so quiet, and it was very impressive. And uh, after the lunch, progressively, the noise come back, but it's very progressive. Gradually. It's very impressive, the silence in the forest, uh, very unusual. <laughs> 1,925 launches, that's the world record, that's how many Soyuz. No other uh, launch vehicle can even uh, uh, compete. The nearest contenders were other Soviet uh, missiles, uh, like uh, the, they're, they're called, I have it here, the R-12 and the R-14, and they flew something like 600 times. So, so you can imagine between 2,000 and 600, you can't compare to the Soyuz, the workhorse. We're gonna go back to Kourou now for a live interview with Philippe Pham, Senior Vice President, Head of Earth Observation, Navigation, and Science at Airbus. Philippe, I can see you, can you hear us? Philippe Pham, can, can yes, you hear us? Yes, I can us? hear you. Good evening. Good. Welcome. Thanks for being with us. We have just a couple of questions for you. First question, can you tell us something about Airbus's role in the mission today? Here. Yes, I can hear you. Good evening. Yes, so we are proud to lead uh, the industrial team and be co-prime for this uh, very high uh, resolution Earth observation mission for the United Arab Emirates. Airbus is the world's number one provider of observation uh, systems on the international market. 
Falcon Eye is a state-of-the-art satellite with our flight-proven Astrobus platform. But Falcon Eye is not only a satellite, it's a full space system, including the ground segment and the imagery processing capabilities. Uh, it's, it will deliver top quality Earth observation imagery for our customer uh, so that it will be beneficial uh, with Earth observation imagery of top quality. Very good. Separation, Philippe, coming up in uh, just about 20, 20 minutes from now. What will be your role once Falcon Eye has been released? Well, our work does not stop when the satellite is finalized and launched into orbit. Before handing it over officially to our customer, we will check that the satellite and the ground system are fully operational. Then the system will be officially handed over to the United Arab Emirates, providing them with a fully autonomous access to very high resolution space imagery and services. This will be a capacity that only a handful of countries have in the world. Okay, Philippe, the mission was possible thanks to a very close cooperation uh, between the partners, uh, the players, including Airbus. We've been hearing a lot of that. What can you tell us about this cooperation? Indeed, this mission was the result of a close cooperation at various levels. First, governmental, between the United Arab Emirates and France. Second, industrial, with a close cooperation between Airbus Defence and Space and Thales Alenia Space. On behalf of Airbus, I would like to thank our customer, the United Arab Emirates Armed Forces, for their trust and the very constructive steps implemented since the very beginning of this ambitious mission. I would like also to thank Yasat and their consultant, as well as Ariane Espace, CNES, the Guyana Space Center, and the Russian teams supporting the Soyuz launcher. Thanks also to the French government for their support throughout the various uh, stages of this ambitious program. And I would like to conclude in thanking again our customer for their trust, their resilience, their patience, throughout these last few months, weeks, and days until the launch tonight. Thanks again. Okay, Philippe Fan of Airbus, many, many thanks. We're going to go to another interview now. We spoke earlier with the two satellite program managers, Michel Roux and uh, Francois Villasec. We began by asking them to tell us about the Falcon Eye program. So Falcon Eye is an Earth observation system for UAE Armed Forces. So it's a full turnkey system in which the satellite is a sensor and we have also delivered a full ground segment which has been developed and uh, deployed in Emirates. What we did also is a training of a full team of UAE people in order to operate this system. For the ground segment details, I will leave the floor to Francois. This ground segment commonly developed with Airbus is capable to control the satellite, uh, to prepare the request of images, and to produce images and intelligence report. This ground segment is located in different sites in the UAE and is capable to be interconnected and he have as well a capacity uh, of deploying a mobile ground segment. Can you tell us something about the satellite itself now? The satellite has been also jointly de developed and designed by uh, Airbus and Thales Alenia Space. So I will not go in detail on the performances of this satellite, which are uh, confidential, but at least I can tell that it has been designed for 10 years operation in flight and is uh, weighted about 1.2 tons. On Airbus side, we have uh, designed the platform, which is an agile platform, and we, are, we were also in charge of the integration and test of the satellite in our premises in Toulouse. In Thales and in space, we have developed and designed the very high resolution optical payload, which is somehow the, the earth of the satellite. How is the campaign for both of you? 
So the launch campaign uh, has been very specific. So we started early this year and the campaign has been stopped and stopped during several months. So as you know, 2020 is a very specific year. It's a year of the COVID. So with lockdown, with travel restriction, with difficulty to work as we were working usually, which has created significant delays. So after eight months of storage in Kourou, the campaign has resumed end of October for one month, and on satellite site, it went smoothly. On the campaign, we can say that it is the longest campaign ever experienced for this type of satellite, and uh, our team have support and uh, uh, try to reduce this schedule as much as possible, even with this very difficult context that Michel just uh, explain. Can we look ahead to uh, separation? What are Falcon Eye's first operations once she's been released? The true life of the satellite will start after separation. So the separation will take place after uh, 58 minutes and 44 seconds after liftoff. After the separation, the first acquisition of the telemetry by our team is after three and, all, three and a half orbits which is a quite long period. So this acquisition is done through the Kiruna antennas. And thanks to automatic sequence, the satellite will be in proper configuration to start testing when we will get visibility. So the first set of uh, tests will be done in our premises in Toulouse over about 10 days before the handover to the main site in Abu Dhabi. After this post-launch maneuver, an intensive period of test will start. And in fact, we will verify the satellite in orbit and mainly its uh, geometric and radiometric performances and verify that it is according to all our specification of the Falcon Eye system. All right, last question. Anything else you'd like to add? So we would like to have a few words on the people. So first, I would like to thank the industrial team, Airbus and Thales, and the armed forces, our customer. We work jointly in order that this program is a success, and it has been appreciated with a good spirit to have a good product at the end. What I would like to add is a specific thank you to my teams. So satellite team, which is the engineering team, the procurement team, and the AIT team and also the system team and the ground segment teams, which are both in Toulouse and in Abu Dhabi. They, are, they had very strong commitment to the program, and it has been really appreciated. Last, I would like to tell a few words on our uh, launcher authorities, so Ariane Espace and their Russian partners. So they work very hard in order to make possible this launch this night, and we thank you them for that. Let me associate Thales as well as this thank you, and uh, I would like to give a special thanks to uh, our customer and uh, to Airbus for uh, the good team spirit and cooperation we had all along this project, and which have helped us to overpass all difficulties. And of course, to our Thales Alenia space people for their dedication for the project. Thank you for that. Michel Roux and Francois Villasek, many thanks. I want to get back for a moment briefly on Earth observation. These satellites are also used for climate monitoring, right? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. it's very important. And um, to take advantage of um, the fact that satellites turn around the Earth in one and a half hour only, so they can collect their data that cannot be collected uh, from the ground, for example, in the atmosphere, on the ocean, the forest, the fauna, the flora, etc. So quite uh, important uh, to have like satellites there. Okay, we want to go back to Kourou now for another interview with Jean-Christophe Chotard, who is the head of French and export observation programs at uh, Thales Alenia Space. Jean-Christophe, I can see you. Thanks for being with us. After some delays, Soyuz finally lifted off with Falcon Eye, and she's now on her way. How are you feeling?
I think I think we have a, a problem with uh, with Jean Christophe's microphone out in Kourou. I can't hear him. I don't suppose you can hear him either. Maybe we'll maybe we'll get that fixed. But uh, he was. Uh, I have his uh, speech here. He was uh, going to uh, congratulate the customers. Of yeah, course. I can hear you. Ah. Okay. Have you changed? Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you now. Go ahead. Yes, you want me to resume? Yeah, I can. Can you hear me? Yeah, okay, go ahead. Very good, thank you. Um, yes, I was saying that we want to say a big thank you to our customer and partner, the UAE Armed Forces and the UAE Space Agency, um, for their confidence into our consortium to provide their advanced Earth observation system. Um, the UAE are entering a new phase in their um, outstanding space history. And with Falcon Eye, the UAE will belong to the small circle of nations able to operate one of the most advanced satellite observation satellites. The UAE can be proud of this. Mm, right. Yeah, uh, Falcon Eye is a technological achievement, of course, but success is not only uh, Jean-Christophe linked to a sophisticated technological performance. Wouldn't you agree? Yes, this is correct. Um, more than a classical industrial project, Falcon Eye has been a real human venture. Um, by pushing the technological frontiers and designing an innovative and unique end-to-end -end system, this program has been a, um, a real uh, adventure and was very demanding. That is why I want to congratulate uh, all the teams at Thales Alenia Space in Cannes and Toulouse um, for their expertise in providing the best technologies for very high resolution satellites uh, for the uh, image ground uh, segment, um, but also uh, for the mobile ground station as well. Uh, we also congratulate our partner, Airbus Defense and Space. And once again, uh, this program shows that our two companies can together and deliver wonderful projects in a perfect team spirit. Thales Alenia Space would also like to thank the French authorities um, for their constant support during uh, all the um, program and to the customer and the industrial team too. Now, the real success factor of this venture is based on a true partnership right. made of confidence and constructive collaboration off. between the UAE armed forces teams and their French counterparts and by this I mean okay uh, you heard earlier space, from uh, uh, Knes, we have to cut you off Airbus because we have to go to a film uh, Jean Christophe I'm terribly sorry Through these six we have a film now another film on Falcon Eyes Prime program. and co-prime contractors sorry I can't wait
We want to apologize to Jean-Christophe Chauffard, Chauvetar of uh, Thalassalini Space. We had a problem with the mics, and we had to go imperativement to the film. So sorry about that. We'll make it up to you next time. Some of the recent historic missions that you mentioned, the Mars Express and the uh, Venus missions, Soyuz. Yeah, the Mars Express was launched in uh, 2003 by uh, Soyuz from, uh, from Baikonur. Depuis la station de Nunyorsia en Australie. We're hearing word from the DDO. Yes, we have uh, important information. This is the acquisition of the signal of the coming from the launcher from, from Nunyorsia in Australia. Good. Okay. Sorry. And yeah, sorry. Uh, it, um, it got some valuable information of the, the, the red planet. It confirmed that there is a ice water in the south pole of this planet. It took like incredible pictures of um, canyons, mountains, and craters, and etc. And right on time, the ignition of the second frigate burn. Our altitude, you can see, 600 kilometers. We're getting uh, near the vicinity of where the satellite is going to be uh, separated, of course. Our speed approaching 8 kilometers per second. Now, this is the 30-second burn, the short one. Yes, the short one, uh, as I mentioned it. This burn will circularize the orbit. Few energy is needed. Du, de uh, I have the confirmation of the ignition of the frigate. And you can see on the screen the nozzle shutting down, and that's the end of that burn. That was a short burn mm. on the face. And so, uh, few but, energy is needed, and therefore the duration of this burn will be very, very short. Yeah. So we have success. But uh, it needs to be uh, very accurate. Well, I have the confirmation of the extension. Indeed, this bird, the duration of this bird is, is very short, uh, 33 uh, seconds only. So we have successfully concluded all the uh, upper stage burns. The composite has finished its powered uh, flight phases. So what's happening now is the satellite Falcon Eye has begun its what they call orientation maneuvers. It's being spun up, I think is the term, approaching the point where it will be injected. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Uh, indeed, uh, concerning this, uh, this phase, uh, the, the tonight separation is a free axis uh, stabilized mode with a dedicated pointing direction. Yes, confirmation of the beginning of the orientation maneuver. Okay. So just after the end of the second burn, orientation maneuver are realized to reach the targeted attitude for the satellite separation. The orientation maneuver are provided by the attitude control systems, and there is a waiting phase in order to stabilize the motions of the launcher. As soon as the satellite is stabilized in the right directions, the separation occurs. All right, separa separation occurs, but how exactly? How? Uh, in detail, uh, during the stabilized phase, the command separation is sent. This will uh, activate the release of the clamp bond of the adapter, and the release of the clamp bond will free the action of the four pushers because we only need four pushers in the frame of this uh, separation. With the activation of the pushers, the physical separation uh, mm -hmm. will, occurs, will occur with uh, the deconnection of the two umbilical uh, connectors. And uh, now the, the satellite will uh, move away from the launcher, uh, the satellite in a sense, and the launcher in the okay, so that's going to happen in one minute. One minute, a moment of high concentration, you can imagine, in uh, Jupiter and all the points of uh, the Falcon Eye facilities as we're approaching uh, separation just under a minute now. Anything going through your mind? This is a very concentrated moment. People are very focused. Yeah, uh, concentration, of course, uh, focus. Uh, to be honest, a little bit of Tension, of course. A little bit of tension, yeah. And I'm also thinking that this is the last step of uh, years of work between uh, the uh, launcher and the satellite teams. Yeah, correct. Yes. And, yeah, all waiting for confirmation from the DDO that their satellite has separated from the frigate, due to come up in just about five seconds from now. And there is the scheduled separation on the animation, and I mean, when you get the confirmation, then we will know 
definition has been... Okay, I suppose. I heard the uh, confirmation of the separations. Are you sure? Great. Great. Very, very great. great. Well, there's the good news. You hear the applause, you see the hugs and the smiles, the happy faces as Soya is completing her mission with successful separation of Falcon Eye at about 611 kilometers altitude over the west coast of Australia. And the signal, as Remy mentioned, will be picked up by the new Norcia ground station that's north of Perth in Australia. They have a station there called DS1A. It's Deep Space Antenna. 35 meter dish, Anisa station set up in 2003. Our mass now, by the way, down from 307 tons, all that's left is three tons. So the new satellite beginning life, thanks to Soyuz and uh, Ariane Space, so you must be happy? Oh, yes, yes, yeah. very, very happy. Yeah, yeah relieved. Uh, it's always like, uh, I mean, can get uh, tired of seeing the the smile on the face and um, the relieved uh, faces uh, because this is a uh, well, right now like the real life of the satellite begins and uh, hopefully it's going to sure. deserve um, uh, address uh, and live uh, for many years uh, in, in space so this is a uh, really uh, relief so you're right the new satellite beginning life uh, thanks to show you and uh, yeah. Ariane Space and work is just beginning or soon will be out all the posts and points around the world where uh, people are following the satellite's first uh, maneuver. So from those very concentrated and tense moments uh, minutes ago, as you mentioned, you see the, uh, the buoyancy in uh, Jupiter and of course and that has echoed all around the world. Oh, from, from myself, uh, I'm thinking to my colleague too because the mission is it's not finished yet, indeed, and we will have another ballistic phase, and after that there will be the deorbitations bird, a burn. But uh, so I'm thinking to my colleague in Kourou and in Every, and to all the Ariane Space teams, very involved, involved in this uh, campaign, and I'd like to, to thanks to uh, our richer partner, and uh, Spasiba, Pushkavomo, Rashioto, Zatlishnoyu Raboto. Which means? Which means, uh, <coughs> thank you very much for this great launch to the Russian team. Ah, very nice. Very so, right. frankly speaking, I'm deeply happy and, and proud to work for my company and to do such a out of ordinary job. Yes, <laughs> we did it. We did it. When we see such a launch uh, sequence, we realize that uh, this is an ambitious task to lift up uh, a satellite from the ground to the space. So this is something yeah. that uh, is really um, like a daily motivation uh, because the, the show is just uh, outstanding uh, to see this. All right, we're going to go back to Kuru for some uh, final words from Stefan Israel, who I believe will will be with, uh, they're getting ready for us. I think he'll be with Philippe Pham and uh, Jean-Christophe Chotard and Mr. Al Rumaiti of uh, Falcon Eye for some final uh, con con uh, congratulatory words after these uh, final uh, moments of uh, the separation. Stefan is, of course, making his way out of the fishbowl where he... Uh, First, shaking hands and getting congratulations. Well, there they are, the four, four of them. Stefan, we, I can see you there. You look very happy. We saw the exciting pictures of the separation uh, of Falcon I just a few moments ago. Can you confirm the mission is a, a success for Ariane Space? Yes, I confirm that tonight we have had a success with uh, our launcher Soyuz. Falcon I is on the targeted orbit. Mission to success. Okay, so some thank yous perhaps are in order. Whom would you like to thank? 
I would like to thank uh, all our uh, teams. I want to thank uh, for sure the Ariane Space team, but as well uh, the Russian team who, has, uh, who have made this success with us. I want to thank uh, CNES team who are with us uh, here on a daily basis uh, in the Guyana Space Center. And for sure, I would like uh, to pay our tribute to our partners for the mission of tonight, the satellite manufacturer Thales Alenia Space and Airbus Defense and Space, and for sure, our customers, the UAE Air Force, and uh, I would like now to leave the floor to them. Yes, thank you. It is a great moment. It is a time to thank all our colleagues in Airbus Defense and Space, Alina Space, and also uh, Ariane Space. We are proud of this moment, and also I'd like to thank my group. I th th thanks to the Emirate uh, engineer who spent five years working hand by hand with their partner. And really, I am happy. Thank you. Great team success indeed tonight. After so many years of uh, teamwork together, great achievement, tribute to all the teams having contributed to this, to this success. Long life to Falcon Eye and long life to this uh, very ambitious mission for the United Arab Emirates Armed Forces. Thank you. Very proud to be part of this success. Um, this is a great page that is turning now. Uh, long life to this project. Thank you to um, our customer. Thank you to uh, the UAE um, um, uh, Space Agency also. Thank you to the French authorities, Ariane Spaskness. And last but not least, thank you to the industrial team, Airbus and uh, the Thales Alenia Space team. This is a great success tonight. Very proud of it. All right, Stefan, one last question. Stefan, one last question uh, before we go. What's next? What are the next launches? So, in fact, uh, we are going to deliver twice by the end of the year with Soyuz. Uh, one uh, with uh, Soyuz from uh, the Russian Cosmodrome of Vostochny. It will be for one web. And we will be back here in the Guyana Space Center at the very end of the year, between uh, Christmas and the New Year, which is quite unusual, for our last mission of Soyuz. So, uh, two Soyuz to come. Thank you. Okay, Stefan Israel, many thanks. Congratulations to all of you out there in Kourou. Well, it's been an exciting uh, evening. We're glad that you could uh, spend it with us. Soy is successfully orbiting uh, a new uh, satellite, releasing Falcon Eye right on time for the United Arab Emirates. So congratulations to everybody involved. Ariane Space continuing the year in fine form, serving the international community. Gentlemen, any last words? Well, yeah, uh, congratulations to all, uh, to the customers, to uh, Airbus Defense and Space, Thales Anila Space, the UAE, uh, to our colleagues uh, at Ariane Space and all the partners that have been working on this flight. Uh, to be honest, in these uh, quite uh, tough days that we live right now, it's, uh, it's really, really nice to, to, to dream of space and to see such uh, nice images and such a nice show, it's, uh, it's, really, uh, it's really amazing. Yes, uh, Space Adventure is probably one of uh, the last uh, big uh, human adventure. And last frontier. Yes, yes, and I'm very proud to, to do that job for that, yes, yes. All right, good enough. On that note, uh, we'll say good night. Over a final launch replay, you can see the shots again. Uh, how exciting shots uh, that uh, Soya is lifting off just about an hour ago. We'll say good night to you on behalf of everybody here in Paris and all of us in uh, Kourou, all the others in Kourou at the Space Base. Joshua Jample with my friends Romy Chevrier and Raphael Chevrier. Saying thanks for being with us. We hope you enjoyed it. We certainly did. We look forward to being with you next time. Good night, everybody. <laughs>